Hello everyone and welcome into another Joint Movement DPT's video. If you're new to the vlog, let me introduce myself. My name is Ryan. My wife Megan and I travel full-time in our renovated RV as travel physical therapists, which is a pretty cool gig because we get to take contracts or assignments all over the United States and explore this great country. If you've watched any of our RV renovation videos, then you understand that our 1994 motorhome has needed a lot of TLC. And when you live full time in your RV, that work never truly stops. So in today's video, I get the opportunity to replace our old faulty thermostat with a brand new one. I like to look at it as an RV upgrade. Today we're going to take a short break from our travel vlogs and do a little bit of RV repair. We haven't done many RV renovation videos or repair videos often. Um, a lot of our little projects we just throw on our Instagram, so make sure you're following us on Instagram to see our stories when we do little things like Megan built two new shelves and put them into our bathroom and they look great. So what exactly was going on with our old thermostat? And that's not our old thermostat, that's a new one. This is the old thermostat. Original 1994 Suburban thermostat. Needless to say, I probably should have replaced this a year ago. So what was going on with the old thermostat was we would turn on the heat and it would do fine for a little while. It would kick on, blow hot air, warm up the RV, perfect. But after a while, it would kick off, and then when it kicked back on to bring the room back up to temperature, it would just start blowing cold air. And so once that furnace was just blowing cold air, the temperature in the RV never got up to the point where the furnace would be kicked off. And so it would just run all night as the temperature dropped, and it would never reset itself. So at first I thought, you know, it has to be the actual furnace. Like, there has to be something going on there. But as I checked a few things, it didn't look like there was any issue. Then my grandpa suggested, well, check out the thermostat. I thought, hey, thermostat can't be that hard to install, and it could be a quick fix. I recently installed this thermostat about a week ago, and we have had no issues with our furnace. It kicks off at the right time, it kicks on at the right time, and it's always blowing hot air. It apparently fixed whatever was going wrong there, and the odds are this old thing was not doing its job. Also, this is way more accurate to the temperature in here. This would read like 50 degrees, and it was about 70 degrees in here, so that's a big difference. So I hopped on Amazon and ordered this thermostat right here by Honeywell Home. This is kind of just your typical brand. And I will go ahead and put that Amazon link down in our video description. So go down there to get that. It was about $25, so not that bad. A pretty cheap upgrade. Now that we have it in, I really wish I would have done this a year ago. Because um, it would have saved on our propane heating. It would have kept our temperature at a more steady state. We would have got a little bit better reading. And um, yeah. For $25, it's an easy upgrade. So let's hop into the install. So the first thing you wanna do is turn off your power source. That means turning it off at the electrical pedestal, you know, turning off your 30 amp, your 50 amp, whatever you're using, make sure it's off. And then also make sure your batteries are off and disconnected. So there is no way any electricity going through the wires to your thermostat will electrocute you. Next, you wanna remove the old thermostat from the wall. So your thermostat might be different from the thermostat in my RV, but typically what happens is a lot of them have a front face plate and then a wall plate. And so when you take them off, you kinda of have two different pieces. So we're first gonna start out with taking off that front face plate, and typically they just pop off. Next, we're gonna take out the main screws that are going into your wall to keep that wall plate 
on the wall. We'll unscrew those and then you should be able to just pull your wall plate off the wall. Now be careful because it's still connected by wires. If you look in the back, you'll see where the wires connect in. Some thermostats do have it on the front, even when it's connected to the wall still, you can see where to disconnect your wires. And so you might have to reverse these steps. But for my thermostat, it was actually on the back side, so I had to disconnect it from the wall first. Once I had it disconnected, then it was simply just taking my flathead screwdriver and unscrewing the wire bolts or the wire screws to get the wire loose as that just pins it against the metal. And so I had two wires. I had a white and a red wire. Your thermostat might have multiple wires. Now it's good to look at what your wires are connected to. So on most thermostats, they'll have little letters like mine had a W for the white wire and an R for the red wire. Yours can have a green wire, a yellow wire, um, an RC wire. It, you could have like five wires coming out of there if you have a newer thermostat. Um, just make sure you are aware of which wires are connected to what and you label them, you know, white wire, red wire. And your thermostat should come with directions and actually most likely little stickers that you can wrap around there to label them. Since I just had two wires and they were the correct colors, um, it was pretty easy to remember. Once you've removed your wires and your wall plate from the wall, you have officially removed your old thermostat. It can go in the trash. Now you are ready to install your brand new thermostat. And it's gonna go a lot like how you removed your old one. You're just gonna reverse your steps. So for the particular thermostat that I got off Amazon, it had me go ahead and put the wall plate on the wall first before connecting my wires. And so I made sure to pull my wires through the wall plate hole, and then I connected it with the screws that it gave me. Now, depending on what wall you're gonna be screwing into, you might have to drill holes first. But for me, I just took my screw gun and was able to screw it in there. Now, you wanna be careful with RV walls and screw guns because if you tighten it too much, you'll just strip out the hole and it'll have nothing to grab onto. So just be gentle with that. I know the wall that our thermostat's on is actually some actual wood, um, so there, it wasn't too big of an issue for me. Once you have the wall plate installed, then we can connect our wires. And so this is where labeling your wires would be useful because now you can match them up to the markings on your thermostat. So there'll be a ton of little wire holes with different letters on them. So for me, I got to connect our red wire with the R and our white wire with the W. Now how this particular thermostat works is you take the little electrical wire and you stick it down into the hole which is on top um, of the wire feed. And once you have it down in there good, then you're going to take your tiny little flathead screwdriver and you're going to tighten down the little screw until you feel it pinch your wire in there. And so give your wire a little tug, it shouldn't be able to come out. You do that for both wires and then you are now connected. Last but not least, you just need to snap the face plate onto the wall plate. So with this thermostat, make sure you put in your two AAA batteries into the thermostat before snapping it onto your wall plate. Oh, and don't forget, on the inside of the actual thermostat, there's a little switch on the inside to pick what kind of fuel source your furnace is. And so there's gas or oil, and then the other side is electric or heat pump. We run off propane gas. I have it switched over to the gas. But snapping it onto the wall plate's real simple. Bada bing, bada boom. And then that's it. Your thermostat is installed, and now all you have to do is go turn your power back on. What's great about this new thermostat is we can actually program it. This is probably my wife Megan's favorite part because we can actually set it to kick on the furnace right in the morning, right before we go to work. So it's a little easier to get out of bed and then um, drop it really low during the day when we're not here. And we only need it to stay above freezing so we don't freeze our pipes. This particular thermostat, you can change how you want the temperature on the weekends, the weekdays, set your times, 
that is a really neat feature. Now that your power is on, your thermostat is ready to go. Then just turn on that heat, give it a few seconds, and your furnace should start up. If it doesn't, start over, look back at your direction, see if you skipped a step. But this has been a game changer for us here in the RV. It does get cold at night here in Arizona where we're at, and so we do like a little heat in the morning. The tools you need for this install would be your screw gun, maybe just a standard screwdriver, and then a very tiny flathead screwdriver. Also make sure you have two AAA batteries as those are not included with the thermostat. And yes, I know I need to do some painting to cover the, the hideous blueprint of our old thermostat. I just don't want to today. Well, hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, please hit that like button. And if you don't already, subscribe to our channel, see our adventures and more RV upgrades. And if you haven't already, go watch our RV renovation videos. It's pretty amazing where we've taken our old RV and have brought it to. And it's really an awesome home on wheels for us to travel the United States. And so hit that subscribe button. Again, thanks for watching. And until next time, See ya.